Hi, hope you're having a blessed day today. I am so thirsty. I really want to open up this soda because I can have a drink. But, you know, they make the top so tight that no matter how hard I try, I can't get it open. But then someone gave me this handy-dandy tool that if I put this on it and turn it, voila, it opens up just like that. So even though I'm very weak with my fingers and my hands, if I have this little tool, it makes all the difference in the world. Well, sometimes we think we are so smart or so strong that we look down on people who don't have the same things that we gifts that we have. Maybe we're good at math, or maybe we're very strong and we can open any bottle. Maybe we're tall and we can reach to the tallest shelf, or maybe we're very short and we could crawl under something. Well, in today's reading, Paul is writing to the Romans and telling them how God wants them to behave towards each other because they're having a lot of competition in the church there and they're all trying to outdo themselves in being better or holier or um, able to convert people more. And he says, no, stop. You need to outdo one another in showing honor and kindness honor and kindness, not in being better than everybody. So today, I, I immediately thought about an old Aesop's fable that I wanted to share with you that I think illustrates this to you. Um, it has uh, new words, some extra new words, and beautiful pictures by the author. But the wisdom that it shares is the same. So let's listen to this fable. The Lion and the Mouse, an adapted Aesop's fable with pictures by Jerry Pinkney. Dusk was falling on the Serengeti Plains. The owl said. Little Mouse lifted her ears in alarm. Suddenly, a sharp screech. As Owl, claws extended, dived for Little Mouse. She popped into the nearest hole scampered out the other side and hid in the tall grass, her little heart pounding. I must get home, she thought. My, my house is just across that golden hill. And off she ran. Well, the golden hill turned out to be Mr. Lion. Mr. Lion was sleeping. And the lion woke up and grabbed the mouse and holding him in his large paw, he roared and... <coughs> How dare you wake me up? Don't you know I am the king of the beasts? Anyone who disturbs my rest deserves to die. I will kill you and eat you. Well, the terrified mouse was just shaking and trembling, and he begged the lion to let him go. Please don't eat me, your majesty. I didn't mean to wake you. Oh, please let me go, and I promise, I promise I'll be your friend forever. Who knows, but one day I could save your life. The lion looked at the tiny mouse and laughed. You save my life? What an absurd idea. And he laughed, and he laughed so hard that he had to hold his belly. But you made me laugh and put me in a good mood again, so I'll let you go. And because he was generous and kind, the lion opened his claws and let the mouse go free. Oh, thank you, your majesty, squeaked the mouse, and scurried away as fast as she could. She was soon cuddled up with her babies in their hidey hole in the rocks, and she told them the story of her encounter with Mr. Lion. <coughs> the next morning, Lion sniffed something in the air, he said, alerting giraffe and elephant and leopard who all froze. Far in the distance... They heard a jeep coming. It was the dreaded poachers. They liked nothing more than to capture the wild animals and send them far away to a zoo, or worse, kill them for their skins. Lion paced. He was alert and looking to the birds for guidance, for they had a better view. Suddenly his paw snagged on a rope, and before he knew it, he was trapped in a rope snare and lifted off the ground. Struggle as he might, 
He couldn't break free and became even more entangled in the net of ropes. He cried and he wept and he struggled, but he couldn't free himself. He let out a roar of anger that shook the forest. Every animal heard it, including even the tiny mouse. My friend the lion is in trouble, cried the mouse. She ran as fast as she could in the direction of the lion's roar and soon found the lion trapped in the hunter's snare. Hold still, your majesty, squeaked the mouse. I'll have you out of there in a jiffy. And without further delay, the mouse began nibbling through the ropes with her sharp little teeth. Very soon, the lion was free. I did not believe you could be of any use to me, little mouse, but today you saved my life, said the lion humbly. It was my turn to help you, sire. One kindness deserves another, answered the mouse. And she scampered back to her babies, who all squeaked with delight at her tale of bravery. And the moral of the story is a kindness is never wasted, or it could be even the weak and small may be of help to the much mightier than themselves. The moral also fits Roman 12, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Little Mouse was sure amazing, wasn't she? Were you surprised that she was actually able to save that giant lion? Oh, she was so brave and she didn't hesitate to help her friend. Well, Paul is urging the Romans, similarly, as we said before, to start being kind to each other and honor each other and not be always trying to be better than everybody else and win the uh, prize for being the smartest or the fastest or uh, the richest, but rather to demonstrate humility, respect, and honor to each other. In the fable of the lion and mouse that we just heard, both lion and mouse eventually show kindness to each other. Lion because he had the power and he could be generous, but little mouse outdid herself and patiently used her ingenuity, her mind, and her little teeth to free her newfound friend. Lion's kindness spreads to little mouse. And it comes back to him later in a way that actually saves his life. So often when we give kindness with no reasonable expectation that we will have it returned, often it comes back to us at a time when we never thought it would and means so much to us. There are many ways we can choose to behave towards other people, especially people we kind of don't like all the time. But as people of faith, we ought to follow the commands that are urged to the Roman congregation and also shown by the animals in this story and outdo each other in the kind and loving way that we care for each other. So I love each one of you and I really miss seeing you and uh, I hope you will pass that love on to many, many other people. Amen.